sisters. It is our Friday live here at HB Women's Ministry. So welcome if you're new. Uh, this is a ministry to help us believe, behold, and become all God's created us to be in whatever season of life. We do a Bible study um, a month, a Bible study a month here. You get little booklets and we get all of our devotional sheets and you fill them out and you come on this journey with me so I can teach you, I can exhort you, and I can encourage you. So welcome, welcome. I'm so sorry for everybody jumping on. Um, I had a little bit of a delay in my start today, so I apologize for that. It was all this wonderful technical issue stuff. So anyway, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping, which is what I like to do for like the first 10 minutes. Um, I'll cut it short since I jumped on a little bit later. This just gives everybody time to jump on. Um, we are a growing international ministry. That means we are all over and it really excites me. So for example, as ladies are coming on, you're going to see Western Pennsylvania. Ladies, let me know where you're from, where you're tuning in from. What is the weather? And today we don't have notes. You realize that when you got your newsletter. If you want a newsletter here in the ministry every single Friday, please head over to heatherbaxter.com right there in the corner and uh, subscribe. You'll see a subscribe tab at the top on every single page. And um, my hair is still wet from the shower. And you will see um, an area where you can contact me. So definitely uh, jump on and do that. You're seeing everybody's saying good morning. So good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning from Michigan here. It's kind of cloudy, a little bit of a dismal day, but it's supposed to be nice with no rain over the 4th of July weekend. Um, hello, Kathleen. Hello, Ellen. Hugs to you too. Um, hello, Linda from Western New York. Look at, we're from all over, all over the globe. Hello from California. Oh my goodness, this just makes my heart so happy. Um, Louisville, Texas. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning from California. So ladies are jumping on again all over the globe. What we do here is Friday. Um, hello, Julia from the UK. Our faithful Julia from the UK hasn't missed a live Friday since the day HB Ministries was birthed. Um, love you, sister. Um, hello, 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 hello. Love. Oh, wow, Tanya. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you very much for sharing that. All right. So what we're going to do is we here in the ministry on Friday in our live sessions, if you're just passing by right now because you're like, hmm, what is this live? Many people on YouTube find this live for the first time and they just listen. So even if you have not done the Bible study, um, we are going to talk a little bit about soul detox. You will receive a word today. You will receive a word. So don't click off. As a matter of fact, I would love to nudge you right now for you to go in the comments and say, hello, I'm new. I'm going to hang out. Hello, I'm new. I'm going to hang out because number one, all the ladies here are going to reach out and say hello. Number two, I would love, love, love for you to reach out to me if you're new and you really enjoyed it here. I'd love, let's turn this phone off, right? I would love for you to reach out to me and tell me um, that you stayed and that you enjoyed. Um, come on, sisses. Why is it so difficult to turn off? Cannot get in there. Anyway, there we go. Reach out to me and tell me that you're new. I would absolutely love it. Hello, Valerie. Oh, sister, so happy that you're here. Um, hello, Pam in Kansas City. Hot, hot. Ooh, in the hundreds. Oh, that's hot. You need to be in a pool. Um, oh, love the, oh, thank you. Isn't this cute? Just a little tie-dyed summer blouse. A little bit of my favorite color for the summer going on. Um so I'll tell you a little bit update of my life here in a second. Um, you know, sometimes our week don't go as planned. So I'll share some fun things with you. Um, but I'm so glad that I have this place to um, stay accountable. Um, it just, it's, it's my protector. It keeps me accountable. It provides, it, it protects me. It keeps me in prayer. It keeps me in my spiritual rhythm and routine. And I need that so much. It's so important. Um, so again, we just are going to do a Bible study. If you're new, please let me know that you're new. Reach out to me later um, and uh, let me know. And if I can help you in any way to kind of figure out how to maneuver around here, I will do that. We are actually ending this Bible study, which is called Soul Detox, 
We um, did three weeks of this very powerful stuff. Each week looked like a sheet like this. We went through, did week one, week two, week three. You have your spiritual rhythm and routine worksheets inside of here. On Monday, I teach. On Wednesday is a podcast and Friday is live. If you didn't listen to this um, last podcast this past week, please head over to wherever, iTunes, wherever you want to go and listen um, to the uh, podcast. Very, very powerful. Also, I was telling you this week that I'm posting a video. It's going up probably this afternoon evening. Um, I had somebody helping me with the edits, which was very, very helpful. And I'll explain in a minute why I was a little bit delayed on getting that up. So um, yes, it basically, this video that's coming is going to be a video about um, a little bit about what's going on in our culture. No matter where you live, and we're going to see that in today's verse, we're going to really study the word of God and break it apart today. That's why we have no notes. We are just going to go with the Holy Spirit today. Completely with the Holy Spirit, we're going to be looking at Luke 11. Um, I'm actually going to start at verse 14 all the way to 26. So if you want to get your Bibles ready, your app ready, Luke 11, 14 through 26 is going to be um, no notes today, just the Holy Spirit and Luke 11, 24, uh, 14 through 26. So open up your Bibles. I have two of my, my Bibles out. I have a leadership Bible and then I have my good old, old, old Bible that I just can't seem to walk away from. And I have my Luke, uh, 14, Luke chapter 11. We, like I said, we are going to go into 14 to, uh, probably, yep, 26. So Luke 11, 14 through 26. If somebody can definitely stick that up there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Luke 11, 14 through 26. If you can keep that. Hello, Leanne. Gosh, Leanne and I go way back, way, way, way back. Her and I were sisters in one of my first, not my first church, but a church where we started women's ministry for the first time, like 20 plus years ago. So, um, she was truly with me in the beginning and at many, many women's events over here in Michigan. So thank you for being here and supporting. Um, uh, yes, you can start at verse 14. Yep. I started with verse 14 too. Good. I wanted to take it back and I'm going to share that. We're going to break this down and we're going to talk about how the world and the culture is divided and how do we detox and how do we kind of navigate through the world today. Super, super important. Also next month, I got to show you this next month, because what do you think, think I'm doing uh, over here on this side of town? I'm already preparing your Bible study for next month. Yes, that's what I'm doing over the weekend. But we are actually going to be talking about right here. We are going to talk about strong women next month. Strong women lead. Strong women fight. Strong women believe. Strong women overcome. Strong women teach and strong women learn to laugh. Yes, we need to learn a little bit about womanhood. So we're going to talk about the roots, how God created us again before we were formed in our mother's womb, before we were formed, God created us as women. And God definitely has some roles and giftings and, and he's wired us a certain way. And more than ever with the cultural division, we women need to stand up. We are not called to be silent. If a church is teaching you that, run. Um, we are definitely called to be submissive in the right ways, but we've even misinterpreted that. So we're going to talk a lot about this. Um, I've been through a lot. I have a huge testimony um, with women in the church and, and, and I'm just going to share a lot, but also we just have some gender issues going on in our culture today. And I love everyone. I, I have to stress this more than ever in the ministry. I love you. I love everyone. I don't care if you're here listening today and you're confused about your gender. I don't care if you're here listening today and you're married to a woman. These things are reality. I love you. What I am here to do is teach you and lead you into the priorities of God's will. God's will is peace. God's will is blessing. Any type of living outside of that is chaos. And if you aren't affected by that chaos, you will be. I want to save you. 
I want to hand you um, a rope or an anchor and just say, let's get anchored together. Let's get anchored together. So again, that is your Bible study for uh, next month is going to be, I'm so excited about it. I'll show it to you one more time. It's going to be um, leading like Deborah, fighting like JL, believing like Lydia, overcoming like Naomi, Naomi, teaching like Priscilla, and laughing like Sarah. Super excited. We're really going to study. So I'm working on that right now. And then you want to hear something else exciting? Has anyone, if it's not all clear on your ladies' ends, I see that. Um, I don't know. I'm having great reception here. So it has to be somewhere. Um, Yes. Okay. Tractor uh, trailer incident. Um, Yes, Lord, please, we put your hand over that incident. God knows it. And we're just asking for the anointing to be there and the spirit of God to be there. Thank you for sharing. Um, Let me just uh, go in this direction. We are definitely in a divided culture. This week, I shared an amazing podcast on culture toxins. Everything was about culture toxins this week. And how do we detox from that? How do we speak life as women over these situations? How do we speak life over the division? We have division right here in my own home. How do I be that mother and speak that division right in my household? Super important. So I want you to learn how to stand and be strong as a woman next month. Then the following month, I have a question. Has anybody read the book called The Red Tent? Has anybody read The Red Tent? If not, I'm going to highly recommend that you grab that book. If you can grab that book, again, it's a womanhood book. It's called The Red Tent. Sisters, you are going to be amazed at what it looked like for women back in the biblical days when they were having their monthly cycle. So I want you to grab this book and it's powerful. The Red Tent, if somebody could put it down. I'm going to be running with this book. I I don't know when or where, but it's on my heart and I think it might come right after this study. And we're going to talk again. God has laid on my heart womanhood, gender, gender the reality of how he's formed us as women and how we have such a distraction in our world today on that. What happens? How has God created us? What does the language look like? How do women need to be encouraging and standing up strong and sharing and leading to the younger generation, even the younger generation that may be divided right now? Because Satan's good. He's strong. His tactics are so good. So if he can encourage and and teach and, and, and misguide through lies, then why can't we encourage and, and teach and guide through truth? We have to be just as powerful on social media. So if you follow me on Instagram, Heather Baxter One, or on Facebook, you're noticing that I'm not shying away from some cultural issues or some toxins. However, I love everyone. I love everyone. I just know God's called and given me a voice to teach, speak, exhort, and rebuke. So I'm trying to do that in a loving yet righteous way in reverence to God to share truth. And so I'm going to help you women be strong too, especially if the division's right in your household. I'm going to help you win your family to Christ. Amen. I'm going to help you with that. So we're going to go through a lot of that. That's what's coming up. So in a minute, we are going to look at a Luke 11, 14 through 26. What was my week like? Why am I a little behind? Why did you not see me so much on social media? Usually I post a lot. Well, if you know, and you've been listening to some of my podcasts, or if you've been listening to some of my videos, I've had like a slight cough and I'm like, it's allergies, it's allergies, and it'll it'll catch me off guard. Well, A lot of you do not know, but not too long ago, because I don't make announcements on anything negative, I did have COVID. It was a while back. Um, Actually, my whole family was shut down with it. But those, I don't make announcements on those things because I'm not giving um, glory to that. I kept waking up and doing what I needed to do. I was very, very tired. Very, very tired. I think I could have slept and slept and slept for a whole week. But I kept showing up. And I was thankful for my Bible study. Well, I have this after effect. I don't know if anybody's ever had it, 
but it's a cough. It's excess um, drainage. And, <clears throat> excuse me, that has been going on forever. So um, the doctors just informed me that this is part of the after effect. And so I'm glad that I wasn't just, I kept saying it's allergies, it's allergies until I really got to the root of it. And I know, I know my healthy body. I know how I feel. I know that. And I'll tell you, you know what I've learned? Co and this was my first time really having this. Um, when the pandemic was, when everybody was getting it, what, two years ago, I never, ever, ever, ever had it. I just got it recently, a few weeks ago. And one thing I will tell you is this, um, yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you, Kathy. Wow. So yeah, the doctor said that this can be, um, in, uh, you know, just a side effect for a long time. And I don't like that. I don't like having excess phlegm here and here. It's like, that's just not me. Also, it's taken me a while. Plus I'm going through perimenopause. It's taking me a while to just gain my energy back and my focus. And I'm not going to allow the energy, the, the enemy, because such a time as this, we need to stand. I need to be better on this side of the ministry, providing information, sharing truth, teaching, getting core site, core groups ready, um, getting our inner circles ready. I have so much vision, so much vision and right now I feel like the enemy is just taking me and I need to fight through this. So I'm asking prayer and just saying, you know, if I can hold you back a few weeks ago by um, giving you COVID, which slows you down, gives you um, mind fog, um, you just don't feel like you're 100% best. And then on top of that, going through perimenopause, I am figuring everything out I can in the, in the last week and the week coming for supplements, vitamins, for those that have watched me on um uh, Instagram, I just had a nurse come and we, the whole family, um, was given vitamin infusions and I'm going to start my vitamin infusions here, um, probably every two weeks just to get my body back up because the, the enemy's not going to, not going to put weight on these visions. He's not going to weigh down my visions. And I'll tell you, it's easy to say that to you now, but on a given day, when you're going through perimenopause, cycle changes, all kinds of stuff, um, you really feel divided in what you're sharing. So number one, pray for me. Number two, pray for HB Ministries. Um, and the biggest thing I'm asking prayer for is my energy to come back full swing and my health to come back full swing because there is so much happening here in the fall. The visions that God gives me in the middle of the night and during the day are overwhelming. However, I'm going to keep up with them. So just keep praying um, and I would appreciate that. But I just wanted to get real with you here on live and let you know um, why I might have seemed a little bit quieter on social media, but I'm getting everything done. It's just been a long month, I'll be honest. And we went to Tennessee as a family and um, just a long month. So we're all healing, all healing. Um, but yeah, it's just this, whenever, whenever you're congested, it just brings fogginess and it's an after effect to COVID. So, hey, I think all of us are going through something, right? Um, and we get tired and we go through this. But as women, because that's what we're going to study, women, I've been really studying about the way um, we're created and just our health and everything from hormones to everything, which led me into really studying women of the Bible and really standing up. And so that's where your Bible study is coming from next month. Again, everything I teach here is something I'm going through and studying for myself. And so we're going to be strong no matter how the enemy wants to attack, attack us. If he wants to attack us through perimenopause or menopause, if he wants to attack us through the pandemic and COVID, if he wants to attack us through health issues, if he's going to attack us in our marriage and through other characters, if he's going to attack us with a cultural division, we are going to win. We are going to lead. We are going to fight. We are going to use our voices. We are going to laugh, but we are going to do this. And you know how we're going to do this? We're accountable here, right here. This is our spiritual rhythm and routine. I'm here for you. I'm here for you every day. I show up every day to teach you. And that is my number one passion. If you grab it and believe it, behold it, you will become it. 
Amen? All right, so that's what's going in. on. We're finishing up today. You have a week off. Enjoy your family. Enjoy what I said in the newsletter. Enjoy the freedom that God's given you. Enjoy that. Grab on and um, just sit in his freedom uh, this weekend. Share truth, share love, share promises with your family. Make some yummy food. Uh, Maybe share some pictures of your yummy desserts and food that you may make for 4th of July over on our HB Woman's Facebook page, our exclusive Facebook page. And keep... um, Keep just just stay alert and know that um, we have a lot coming in the ministry, especially for the fall. Those core groups, those inner groups, all of this is going to be starting. I'm also going to have a membership group for ladies that want more. I'm going to be teaching a whole lot more and doing some inner circle groups, which is going to be a little bit less, actually way less money than doing an hour coaching call. So I'm I'm realizing that. But if you still need those coaching sessions and you're really in a hard place, I promise you they're worth your invest- investment. So wherever you're at, email me. I'm here for you. I will get in that sacred space with you. All right. Amen. Let's move. All right. Let's go to Luke 11. So that's just a little update on me. Um, we're still moving here in the family. We're still Again, if you follow me on Instagram, we've got floors being put in today, downstairs, um, tile. So I have lots of construction workers here and um, still unpacking boxes. I think yesterday I unpacked my china. So it's still all real here, right? Okay, let's go ahead and open the word of God. Um, Father God, open the eyes of our heart. Help us to see truth. Um, uh, Lead us into um, your word Help us to walk into your word. Help us to separate what is divided in this world through your truths. Um, Keep us from being distracted by our wants and our desires, Um, but help us to embrace your word today. Give each one of us a specific word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Luke 11, I'm going to read. Please follow along with me if you have your Bibles. We are in Luke 11, and we are going to start in verse 14 through 26, and this is going through 24, I'm sorry. This is going to be like a precept upon precept study. So it says here in verse 14, a house divided cannot stand. I don't know where you're at, but write that down somewhere. Write that down possibly in your note pages in your soul detox journal. Um, a house divided cannot stand. You're going to know what that means. I hope that rings in your heart um, for the rest of this year. It says, and he was casting out a demon and it was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke and the multitudes marveled. But some of them said he casts out demons by Belzeb, Belzebub, the ruler of demons, Others testing him sought from him a sign from heaven. But he knowing their thoughts, because God knows everyone's thoughts, amen, all of our thoughts, said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and a house divided against a house falls. If Satan Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you can say, I cast out demons by Belzebub. And if I cast out demons by Belzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, the finger of God, the finger of God, ladies, circle that. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed... When a strong woman, when a strong woman, when a strong woman, fully armed, guards his own place, circle this verse, sisters, circle this verse. When a strong woman, fully armed, guards his, her place, her goods are in peace. Her goods are in peace. But when, a, but when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather me, gather with me, scatters. 
When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finding none, he says. I will return to my house from which I came, and when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of the man is worse than the first. Whew, what a good verse. So what I want you to see here, first of all, um, we're going to go back to verse 11, and this is how I do Bible study if I'm at home and I'm reading verses. I do something called precept upon precept. And so we're going to do that right now. We're going to do a precept upon precept. So you can see right here, my Bible is right in front of me. And sometimes I will take pencils or our Bible code charts and I'll break it down. For right now, we're going to go back and here's what I'm going to share with you. A couple notes. I'm going to help you see this scripture from your perspective, your home, your children, your husband, your life, your church, the culture. And I'm hoping that this will help you receive a word from God over your situations, your life will. Amen. Again, I have to say this. I say it all the time. And you have a week off if you need to look into this. Every single year in January, I put together a new life wheel. If you're interested, please watch my videos called A Better You in 2022. For the past, I want to say 17 years, I have been writing visions over my family. The life wheel is different areas that I focus on. And I put that life wheel, which I explained that in my main war binder. So I need to share this with you because... As we share today's verse, I want you to understand which somebody reached out to me this week and I will be putting a video together this week on our week off, how I work in this, my main war binder. And if you haven't watched my video on how to put your main war binder together, this will be there for you. And so this is my main war binder. Inside my main war, war binder, you will see all the labels, but you will also see my wheel of life that's done. And this is basically all of my dreams and the areas that I'm focusing on in 2022. So um, from finances to personal physical growth and spiritual growth, um, health growth, uh, friends, my love relationship and my marriage and with, with those around me, um, just recreation, spirituality, career, um, ministry dreams and goals, everything's here. And so as you move through life in 2022, you may feel attacked only in certain areas, possibly your marriage, possibly your finances. Maybe there's a change in your career. What I do is I begin to write dreams on those areas of my life and um, what could be or should be dreams. Watch the videos and they'll help. And what I do is I listen and not every month or every week is God speaking on a specific part of that life wheel. But for example, for example, this month, he's specifically speaking to me on womanhood and my personal health, my emotional and my physical health, really speaking to me on that. So I revamped some of my dreams, had some dreams down, but I got even more specific with them. And I'm asking God to lead me into some truth. Also, I'm praying specifically on my life wheel because again, I review it. I review my dreams and goals daily. It doesn't mean I'm writing in there daily, but then when something's really specific, I kind of reset it. There is a child, one of my children, that I'm specifically praying over in that life wheel. So I've really sat down. This verse today and the verses that we do here in the ministry, a lot of times will minister to you over your set areas of life. So what it does is it helps me not get distracted when the enemy's loading his gun. Because I already wrote dreams, I already put things in order, and I'm focused. So when I have that focus, I can go along with the rest of my Bible study and I'm not going to be divided. I'm going to stand. And that life wheel helps me stand. Even if I'm 
it's in a bad place or something's, you know, kind of going in the wrong direction. I know that God and I sat down. I know I had my Jesus meetings and that's really, really important. So again, I stress with you, I have sat down with so many women in an hour coaching call and we've even went over and we've set up that life wheel. I helped them see every area of their life so it's categorized and clear. So if you need to do that, contact me. So now that you know that I have certain areas that I'm working on, I'm going to share today's verse and I'm going to show you how I allow the Holy Spirit to speak over that part of my life. I think when your Bible study is interacting with your life and you learn how to do that, you experience God. A lot of women will say, I don't know how to make a connection with what I'm reading. I don't know how to study. I'm wondering, how do you get that out of the word of God? And I don't see what God's trying to help me realize here. Well, once you have areas of your life set up, I think the Holy Spirit is able to help manage and kind of divide things for you. I hope that helps. So with that in mind, let's now break the scripture down. And if your life wheel's there, you'll see where God may be showing you some stuff. In verse 11, let's go back to verse 11. I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 11. It says here. Wait, no. Luke 11, 14. I'm sorry. A house divided cannot stand. And he was casting out a demon and it was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke and the multitudes marveled. But some of them says he casts out demons by Belzebub, the ruler of demons. First off, what's happening here is Jesus is the way maker and miracle maker. Ladies, demons are like strongholds. We can have demons of addiction. I mean, if some people can help me here, start laying your demons down. What are you struggling with? If you want, please, in this live Bible study in the chat, nobody can see you. Nobody knows. Lay it out. Lay it out. Get it before us. Get it before the Lord. And the Lord wants to cast something out in your life. The Lord wants to cast something out in your husband's life. The Lord wants to cast something out in our kid's life. And a lot of times it's a cultural toxin. It's something that's divided. It's something opposite. It's something that's not lining up with the kingdom of God. Okay, so it can be addiction. It can be, I, I believe, that there's, there's, there's demons of um, uh, pornography. There's demons of um, alcohol. There's demons, there's so many demons. There's demons um, with... Um, Yes, there's anger, demons of gossip. Um, come on, help me out, ladies. Ladies, where's your stronghold? There's demons, I believe, in gender issues right now. There's demons in sexuality right now. Whatever, there's demons that are holding us back. There's strongholds, anger with our government and all the hatred in the world. There's demons out there. So what I want you to understand is that Jesus is still casting out. Jesus is still trying to to heal. Jesus wants to cast something out of your husband, your daughters. He wants to bring them to the center. Amen. So in this world, we have people walking around anointed with the Holy Spirit, and then we have demons. So we have this war and it's going to be that way. That's what it is. And when God does something good in your life, and I shared my testimony on um, the podcast this week, one of my testimonies, and when God is doing something in your life, you're going to realize that people marvel. People are, wow, they get excited. And a lot of times that draws them to the faith. Now, on the other hand, you will have people that'll mock you and they won't believe it has anything to do with God. Oh, well, God's just this. That's what you think God is. I don't believe God the same way. I don't believe that was a miracle by God. So it says, they believe that those demons were cast out by Belzebub. Let me tell you what Belzebub means. Belzebub, if I'm even saying it right, Belzebul 
is the name given to the prince of demons, the name given to Satan. So please do not name your dog Belzebul. Do not name your children Belzebul <laughs> because it is the name given to the prince of demons. It's Satan. The name probably originated from Balzebub, Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies or Lord of Dung. When King Ahaziah fell through the lattice in an upper room in Samaria and injured himself, he inquired of this Philistine God. So again, the Lord of the Flies, the Lord of the Flies. Now I have to tell you this because this is funny. Yesterday on our deck, I was on Amazon Prime because we have so many flies on our deck and I ordered a fly zapper. I ordered a fly zapper and I thought, just this little fly zapper I just want. I don't want to do this all the time. I'm doing this last night. All of us are sitting out there and I'm like, I am going on and finding a, a fly zapper. Now, when I got up this morning and I was just reading and studying early this morning, I was laughing so much when I read that, you know, that Prince of Demons and the, you know, Satan, Belzebub, it represents Lord of the Flies. That's their God that they're worshiping. And I'll tell you, sisters, flies are all around us, all around us today in the culture, all around us in the world. And we have to learn to distinguish what is true. And so we got to learn to zap those flies because they're a distraction. They are a distraction to God's miracles. They are a distraction to what God wants to cast God wants to do something great. Don't let the flies distract you. Don't let other people give you their opinions. Don't let other people speak about what they don't think your God can do. You know what I mean? You've got to go after those flies in your life. And it says here also in verse 16 that others testing him sought from him a sign from heaven. Do you ever feel like you're tested? Maybe from your husband, testing from your children. Sometimes your, te- your kids will test you and they'll degrade your own religion and your own God and your own faith right in your own household. I can tell you, I have stories of all three of my kids in different seasons of their life when they're stuck between their own glories. Listen to my podcast when, and, and I'll talk to you about being stuck between glories. All my kids are stuck between their own personal glories. I'm stuck between my own pers- personal gro- glories it's a process of us growing, but we cannot be become divided. But if you are standing strong in faith and somebody else in your, fa- your, your, your family is testing you, testing your God, I want you to understand, and you're going to see here in a minute that you can overcome that. You have to stay, stand strong. That is a fly you have to zap. You can zap that fly, mama. You can zap that fly, wife. You can zap that fly because people are going to test you and they're going to test your God, even your children. I'll never forget one of my kids saying, mom, I don't believe in your God. I don't believe in what you think. Well, guess what? Test me, but this is how we're going to stand in this house. This is who we're going to serve today in this house. So get your flies out. Okay. See where I'm going with this? You've got to stand strong as a woman. Do not let your kids belittle you. Do not. You stand strong. I don't care what age your kids are. God's called you. And I'm going to show you where here in this verse. It's so good. Ready? So it says, Others testing him sought from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought into desolation. And a house divided against a house falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. So here is what I want you to see. Verse 21 is super big. God is going to give you truth and promises every single day you show up and you do your spiritual rhythm and routine here in the ministry. And I'll tell you what, 
When he gives you a promise, that promise is like the finger of God that you can use to speak life, to speak life. This whole week we talked about speaking life over situations. The finger of God, the promise of promises of God can speak life and cast out, can speak life and cast out whatever needs to be casted out. I am praying specifically for things to be casted out certain children. I am praying for certain truths to be gone. I am praying for certain people to return to the center of God's will. I will not allow division in my household. It may seem divided, but the enemy is not going to play any cranks here. I'll zap them. I'll zap whatever fear, whatever worry, whatever thoughts he brings into my mind because he's not going to test who my God is. Amen. I'll put the finger of God on it. So look what else this verse says. Super good. It then goes on to say, when a strong man, can I please say strong woman for the sake of our women's ministry? When a strong woman fully armed guards her own place, her goods are in peace. Her goods are in peace. Sisters, when you wake up to your spiritual rhythm and routine, you are staying guarded with his truth, with his promises. You are keeping things in order. In Proverbs, which we're going to study next month because we're going to talk about women that can lead. We're going to talk about women that can fight. We're going to talk about women that can laugh. We're going to talk about women that can share their faith. We're going to talk about women that can stand strong. True womanhood. And those women guard the ways of their households. So remember, if you're guarding the ways of your household, God's word's already telling you that there's division out there. There's division out there. Um, sweetie, we're in Luke 11, 14 through 24. And today we are specifically talking about sweeping and getting the enemy out and keeping things in order because we're in a culture that's divided. So how do we keep things in order? How do we keep things at peace? We're specifically right now, I'm reading Luke um, 11, and I am specifically in verse 21, one of my favorite verses, Luke 11, 21. And it says, when a strong man, again, for the sake of the ministry, I'm going to say woman, when a strong woman fully armed guards her own place, her goods are in peace. I want the peace of God in this home. Do arguments happen? Absolutely. But when I'm guarded, I know how to sweep and keep things in order in this house. And I will sweep and zap every fly I can. Every fly I can. They are out. They're dirty. They're contaminated. The world's dirty. The, the, the world's contaminated. The enemy is sneaky. He's going to come in through people. He's going to come in through social media. He's going to do whatever he can to be the Lord of the flies. He'll land on your kids and he'll encourage them. But you know what? You have the power to put the finger of God on that. You have the power to divide that. We aren't working in that power. We're setting back and letting the flies gather. We're not out there researching and deciding what can we do. We're not out there getting fully armed. This ministry is here. I show up every week. I'm writing your next study so you can stay fully armed in the faith. So as you believe, behold, and become, you are going to spill over and other people will be marveled. You will. God will use you. God will help split Red Seas all around. God will help split the cultural toxins and he'll use you. Amen. But when a stronger than he comes upon him, this is verse 22, but when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. We have a responsibility to gather in the word of God. We have a responsibility to build ourselves up in truth. God says that. Just showing up to church on a Sunday or listening to a church message once a week, once a week is not how you are going to gather because you are scatter. God's called you to divide the scriptures, to learn the scriptures, to grow in knowledge, wisdom, and discernment, to establish yourself in knowledge, to grow in wisdom, 
to get rooted. I can tell you so many Bible verses. So here, that means that you're seriously going to get armed up and this way you're not going to scatter. If you're not armed up and you're not staying in control and really growing, then you're going to scatter. It's easy because a fly will get you. Look what the next one says. And here's where it gets really good. I want to talk to people that say, you know what? I gave up this addiction, but, or God provided a miracle, but my marriage was healing, but my kids were this, but okay. We all have those. I was doing really good in this area, but I was clean for this long, but my par- my marriage was moving really smoothly, but my relationship over here was really good, but my ministry was moving forward. My job was moving forward. My career was moving forward, but things began to scatter. Follow me. Follow me in this next verse. I'm in 24. An unclean spirit returns. Anything outside of God's righteousness and God's word and outside of truth is unclean. There's dirty and there's clean. So the will of God is for us to live clean. When we live clean, things are in order and it's peaceful. When I get up in the morning and I reorganize the, reorganize the house and everything in it is in its place, it's clean and I just feel good. When I go to bed at night, I love to have my sink clean. I love to. A lot of times I'll run the dishwasher. In the morning, I'll unload the dishwasher. So then during the day, things aren't piling up in the sink. They're clean. They're put away. They're organized where they need to go. So I can start the next day. And as dishes gather, I can put them in the dishwasher. I can keep things sorted and organized. That is something that I have to show up and do every single day. If I don't show up and do this, then things are going to scatter and there's not going to be peace. There's going to be chaos in the family. Amen. I'm also one that likes to get up and make my bed in the morning. I like to, you know, take, have my hair done and, and get dressed. I feel clean. I feel like the enemy's not going to zap me. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm guarded. I'm ready. So the same illustration with cleaning and getting your house and sweeping and and running the vacuum and going over your rugs and whatever your your little routine is in the house, this is the same thing that, that truth and scripture is teaching us here. It's saying that when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, we talked about everything um, unclean. Let's do one. Let's do an example on one thing. I'm going to pull one out. You can put anything in there. When pornography goes out of a man, it could be a certain addiction. When alcohol goes out of a man, when lust goes out of a man or woman, okay? Man is just used here. You could put it either way. I'm going to go back with pornography though. Um, This is something that we've dealt with um, in our marriage. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man. When pornography goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. Basically the fly, Satan. Satan is tied up with everything negative in this world, pornography. So when that is casted out, and it's gone. And in order to come to that place where that unclean spirit is casted out, that person, so for example, my husband would feel conviction that something's dirty in there. When we went through marriage struggles, when we went through um, adultery and affairs, there was a dirtiness. There was something that didn't feel clean, didn't feel right. That's God working. When you know something's not right and it feels unclean and we all are messy, hence the beautiful messy show, my podcast, we're all messy. When we start feeling like, ugh, ugh, mm, dirty, not right, that is something that needs to be casted out. And that's a process. We study that. We learn about that process of getting that demon out, putting, remember a couple verses up, 
Put your finger on the promise of God and cast it out. Work on it. Show up. Get yourself fully guarded. Work on it. Because then there'll be order in the home. It takes time. Order in the temple. Order in the temple. Here's your temple. I'm trying to give you a comparison. So here you are fighting. Finally, the husband or whoever in in whatever unclean spirit, let's go back to pornography, realizes it and says, I want it out. Maybe showed up to a men's Bible study. Maybe got counseling. Maybe sat down with his wife and said, okay, I'm going to do this. I agree. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I don't want this anymore. I want to remain clean and at peace with God. I'm tired of Satan's flies. I'm tired of the trips, the tricks. And so what happens is that spirit goes, it goes running around, it leaves. But guess what? Guess what? The enemy knows that if we do not stay fully guarded, let's go back up to the verse we were just in a minute ago, which was verse 21. When a strong woman or a strong man fully armed guards his own place, his goods are in pl- uh, good, goods are in peace. If you don't stay fully armed and at guard, that spirit will return back with seven more, meaning it comes back a little stronger. So when people battle addictions, it takes a long time, 12 steps, whatever you're going through, coaching calls with women. I've spent one year coaching women before the red sleep split in their marriage, before their eyes opened up in their marriage, before things happened, but they stay fully guarded. They stayed fully aware and they were able to put the finger of God on things they wanted casted out. Even though it didn't happen right away, they stayed in control. So sometimes the way you pray for your husband is going to help cast those demons out. And then drawing your husband into a place of counseling, getting him into church, going regular. This is what my husband and I did. I said, no way. That demon is out. That lust is out. My husband now has eyes for me. We are finding a church home. We are finding Bible study. We are getting into some core groups and we are going to grow and stay guarded because let me tell you what, that demon is not going to find him again. Now I'm giving you examples. Same for me. I can give the same illustration over and over. When I let my guard down as a woman, when I let my guard down and I don't stay strong, I can tell you I'm attacked seven times harder. And I know the difference now as a Christian. I know the difference. So what I want you to see is when an unclean spirit goes out, whatever spirit, we're talking about them, and he's trying to find a place to go. And he can't find, he's going to return to the house right here, the temple, which he left. (coughs) And it says, and when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. So here's something I want you to see. You can think. That just because you put the finger on it and casted it out, you're all swept and put in order. You're all swept and put in order. That's what it's saying. That you're all swept and put in order. Ah, it's all good. I'm all swept and put in order. Just because you did something once and made a decision does not mean you're swept and put in order. It means you started the cleaning process. Let me go back to my example. If I load the dishwasher once, I have to load it again. If I loaded the uh, the kitchen, unloaded the kitchen sink and cleaned my kitchen last night, I have to do it the next night and the next night and the next night and the next night. Same thing here. If you think that you're just going to sweep and put it in order once, it's not the case. You have to be on guard, spiritual rhythm and routine. Women will often say, wow, I'm so glad I jumped back on and I Googled Heather Baxter and there was a study and I jumped in and I cannot tell you how chaotic and lack of peace I had this past year. And I just felt attacked way more. What happened was, You did good, you swept and cleaned some stuff up, and then you took a break. 
when you take a break, the enemy will enter in and dwell. And sometimes, (coughs) post-COVID cough here, sometimes he will attack you worse than the last state that you were in. Ever feel that? Ever feel that? I have watched that happen in so many people. And now that we have a culture that's so divided, we have this distraction going on um, today that's, that's keeping us away from God's word and people are having to make choices. If you read today in the newsletter, I talked about choices. When we make choices according to God's truth, when we put our finger on God's truth and we make the right choices, it's to step us in the right direction and keep things swept and cleaned and keep the fly of the enemy away. When we don't know how to stand and stay guarded, then we're attacked by the culture and we're easily persuade, easily persuade. And what I find so interesting today is everybody out there fighting about what's right and what's wrong. Please watch my video that's coming up today. There's so much ignorance and um, arrogance and lack of knowledge for who God really is. Who God really is. People don't believe because they've never experienced peace. They've never experienced a good God, a fun God, a loving God, a righteous God. And if we can on this side of heaven do something, that means we are going to be a woman that leads and a woman that fights for our culture today, for the toxins that are out there. Because when we fight, we save our kids, our children. We, when we fight, we save our husbands. When we fight, we save our communities. Amen. And so that is what we are going to do. So whew, I think everything in this study was really good. I pray That as you continue to detox, as you continue to reflect this week on this study, maybe you're finishing up some of your past pages, um, know that we are called to keep things swept and kept clean so the unclean cannot return. And that means we have to be on guard. We have to keep having a fresh finger of God word, a fresh promise like I was sharing in all the scripture verses today. So something doesn't come back and try to get into our homes and take over. So it may look like it's in your home. There's some things you feel like you just want to sweep out, but maybe it's staying with a character. Remember the power that you have to put the finger of God and speak life, even if it looks like it's there, over that situation and cast it out. In God's timing, your prayers, your faith will not return void, but it'll do what God wants it to do. And I've watched that work in several coaching calls, in several uh, family members. So now when I come up against it again, something that's unclean and wants to zap things in my house or zap my joy or zap my, you know, cause worry, I can look back and know that I'm separated from the world. I'm separated for the cultures. But the verses today that we studied reminded me I have the power to zap all those flies, zap the testing that's going on. If your kids 15 and above, the biggest thing they want to do is test you as a mom right now. Test you, test your faith, test your emotions. Stand strong. You're bigger. With God inside you, stand strong and put your finger on it. You got this. You got this. Um, Yes, you can ask for prayer, my sweet sister. Um, Isabella, you can definitely ask for prayer. You know, thank you for sharing that too, because we are going to start, I'm going to start a, um, a page on um, heatherbaxter.com, which is for you to uh, um, drop your prayer requests. And I have some women in the ministry that are definitely called to prayer. That is their gifting. And I'm going to be laying my hands over these prayers. And I'm also going to be um, allowing people that are gifting gifted to serve in this ministry. So be watching for that. That was on my heart. So thank you, Isabel, for sharing that because we are going to definitely go in that direction. So I'm so happy that you loved 
this study. I thank the Lord for the study that we had. Um, please be praying as I work on the following study. It should be ready for you. I will go ahead and put up over on um HB Woman's uh, exclusive Facebook page. I'll I'll be sure to put the dates of when everything's starting and get a calendar going. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, Heather Baxter One, or live on Facebook, you'll start seeing the behind the scenes and the dates coming out. I'm definitely going to take a um a break today. I have family coming in that have not been to the new house at all. So I have family that's going to come in and just relax here. I'm excited about that and um, just hang with family and rest all weekend. Still have people working on the tile right now. So I'm going to be doing that. And then as Monday comes, I'm working and preparing for our following study. So that study will be up and available. Again, I want to thank everyone that has donated to the ministry to keep things going. I love you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support in um, donating. Those donations went to so many Scholarship Sisters. Um, also, Scholarship Sisters are ladies that can't um, tithe or, or um, you know, give to their spiritual rhythm and workbook journal. Um, not one lady should go without the Word of God. So we make it work here in the ministry. And every lady was given a study last month. And I tell you, it just overwhelms my heart that everything always matches up. So thank you for every single woman um, that gave and sowed a seed. It's a huge blessing. Um, God's going to you know, really be working and preparing new things. We've got core groups. We've got inner circle groups. Lots of things that are starting um, here in the ministry at different levels. So at different areas where people can be involved. This is my full-time job. Um, I absolutely love it. I love coaching ladies all week long. That's a huge passion. Um, so if you need something about that or you have more questions, then do a discovery call with me and let's figure out what we can, um, discovery calls will link you to the next best session or how to rate your session. So those are super good too, if you're interested. So have a happy 4th of July weekend. Um, be blessed, enjoy your family, um, enjoy God's freedom and, in the newsletter, I left uh, a message in there for you to please share with me via a short email the freedoms that you have discovered, maybe in HB ministry thus far, maybe a specific Bible study. What freedom, what, what promise have you discovered? Um, and I'm going to share those on 4th of July on Monday. I'm going to go live and I'm just going to share um, everybody's testimonies. And we're just going to give God glory because um, when we believe and we stand on the gospel, um, the truth will set you free, free in indeed. What truth has set you free? What is really rang in your spirit? Where are you finding liberty? Um, I want to hear from you. So I left that in the newsletter. If you are do not have the newsletter right now and you're just watching today for the first time, Head over to heatherbaxter.com. This live and the newsletter for today will be located on my blog page. They're all there from every past week. For the future, please head over to heatherbaxter.com and subscribe so you can get the newsletter and stay up to date with everything that happens each month in the ministry. If you want to catch the Soul Detox, the um, actual journal that we just did, um, let's see, right here. Ah, uh, not that one. Ah, uh, right here. These journal pages for Soul Detox, all of them. Let me open this one up. Mm -hmm. I'm just having fun right now with all this fun stuff. Um, I lost it. Anyway, basically, yeah. Our Soul Detox Bible Study. You can grab this Bible study um, at any time. And you can go ahead and maybe this week finish the Bible study up. I think you could do it if you really wanted to. So that's available. All past Bible studies are available at heatherbaxter.com over in the ministry shop. So I love you ladies. Thank you for taking care of the ladies on the side and, and responding to their prayer request. Um, I thank God for all of you. And I pray that uh, you enjoyed um, today's uh, Bible study. I hope that you enjoyed the verse. And um, I love you. I love you ladies so much. Thank you for being here and I'll see you um, next week in the next live and stay tuned for the next study.